Greetings everyone and welcome back. Right now, we are using our recently developed Batocera Arcade Box to run Road Rash using PS1 emulator. We are using Batocera Linux here, which is an open source and completely free retro gaming distribution designed to turn any computer or single board computer into a gaming console. Here, we booted Batocera on our fairly old Latte Panda V1 single board computer, which was released in 2015 and has an Intel Atom X5 Z8350 quad core processor with 4GB DDR3L RAM. This processor was powerful for an SBC at that time but not really effective today if we want to use it to run Windows effectively. Making a retro arcade that can simulate systems like PS1, PS2, PSP, Sega, Game Boy and other without breaking a sweat was one of the best use for this old SVC. We created a compact box-like enclosure that holds the Latte Panda V1, a USB extender hub that allows us to connect multiple controllers to this device for multiple players and a specially designed power circuit that required 12 volt input and can provide stable 5 volt 3 amps output to operate the Latte Panda to its maximum capacity. We have used one of our previous projects, which was this Woodwork Fusion PC, for this project's body and screen. To provide room for the arcade box, the PC motherboard and other components were taken out. After that, we put our arcade box inside this PC frame and put everything together to create the ideal arcade system that runs Batocera. For the power circuit, we opted for a bug converter circuit in which we have chosen the IP6505 IC, which is a step-down converter with an inbuilt synchronous switch that can handle an output of 10 amps for fast charging protocols. The schematic was originally created and set up using the datasheets example layout. All of the components on this board are surface mount, which minimizes the need for manual soldering, including the mounting of the through hole components. After completing the PCB design, we exported the Gerber data and sent it to PCBWay for samples. An order was placed for red solder mask PCB with white fill screen. After placing the order, the PCBs were received within a week and the PCB quality was pretty great. Over past 10 years, PCBWay has distinguished themselves by providing outstanding PCB manufacturing and assembly services, becoming a trusted partner for countless engineer and designer worldwide. You guys can check out PCBWay if you want to create PCB service at an affordable rate and low price. We begin the power board assembly process by adding solder paste to each component pad. Next, we use an ESD tweezer to pick and place each component in their proper location. We lay the circuit on our miniware reflow hot plate which heats the PCB from below up to the solder paste melting temperature, allowing all the components to be soldered to their corresponding pads. For this project, we are using one of our previous projects, which was this Woodwork Fusion PC, which was an all-in-one PC made from wooden boards joined together using 3D printed brackets and feature a 15-inch LCD monitor, as well as motherboard, PSU, hard disk drive, and other PC components that were all packed inside this wooden frame. We wanted to use this PC frame as well as the display, so we remove everything and begin our design process by placing the Latte Panda V1 inside the wooden PC right below the display, along with the model of USB extension and mounting them all in a customized frame body that holds the Latte Panda and USB extension in place. After finalizing the model, we exported its mesh file, which was then 3D printed using gray PLA with a 0.5mm nozzle and 0.2mm layer height. The assembly process begins with putting the DC barrel jack in its mounting hole and tightening it with the included nut. Next, we position the power module in its proper location and solder the DC barrel jack's positive wire to the V-in of power module and connect it ground to ground. In addition, we attach a JST UC2512 wire harness to power module's output positive and negative terminal. This wire harness will be used to power the Latte Panda V1. To permanently put the power module in its place, we use a little amount of hot glue to secure it to the frame body. 
to see if our power module was working or not, we connected the 12 volt adapter to the DC barrel jack and tested the output and input voltages. The input voltage was 14.66 volt and the output voltage was 5 volt, indicating that our setup was functioning. Now we install the Latte Panda in its proper place with 4 M2 screws. Finally, the harness is connected to the Latte Panda's 5V and ground connector, which can be found near the USB micro port of the Latte Panda. The Latte Panda is mounted on the frame body, but as you can see, it is extremely difficult to reach the Panda's tiny push buttons. To address this issue, we added an external switch that will be connected to the CON2 connectors that is seen behind the Latte Panda's push button. We begin by attaching wire to the Latte Panda's CON2 and linking them together with the switchboard's NO and NC terminal. Next, we place the switchboard over the screw bosses and secure it in its place using two M2 screws. Finally, we place the USB extension board within the frame and use four M2 screws to secure it in its place. To test this arrangement one more time, we plug the 12 volt 4 amp DC adapter into our DC barrel jack connector, which is attached to the power module. This causes the Latte Panda blue status LED to light up, indicating that our setup is functioning. We install the arcade box inside the woodwork PC, just below the display. And then use 4 M4 wood screws to permanently fasten the arcade box to the wooden baseboard. Because we are utilizing an old LCD display with no HDMI output, we have to use a VGA to HDMI cable to link the display to our Latte Panda V1. Two AC outlets will be used here, one for the display and other is for 12V adapter. The Project Star is the Batocera Linux, an open source retro emulation station OS that can be used to transform any computer into a retro arcade in matter of minutes. We downloaded the Batocera image file for our desktop PC and then used Rufus to create a bootable disk using a downloaded OS. Here is the end result of this small build, an arcade machine running Batocera. We ran the OG Road Rash on the Batocera using the PS1 emulator and our Xbox controller to control the device. In terms of constraint, the Budokai Tenkachi that we attempted to run on this PS2 emulator has frame rate issues. It was working at a very low frame rate, which might be due to the poor Batocera optimization on this SVC that we are using, or our Latte Panda one was just simply not powerful enough. This project went well overall and I'll be back with the version 2 shortly in which we will upgrade the device and utilize a much more capable single board computer with a graphic card for emulation. In addition, we appreciate PCBWA support of this project. Visit them for a variety of PCB related services such as tensile service and PCB assembly services as well as 3D printing services. Thanks for reaching this far and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.